Blog Talk Radio. Healing with Candace. I'm your host, Candace Craw Goldman. This program was created to assist humans in this rapidly changing world. While it is expanding into new realms, it is based upon the foundation of the late great Dolores Cannon's work. So thank you, Dolores, for continuing to encourage us to explore new worlds. Also, thanks to Greg Prescott and Michelle Walling at In5D.com for making this show possible. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the supporters of this show, all of my In5D friends, the new ones I met in Sarasota last weekend, my New Earth Journey friends, my Facebook friends, QHHT practitioners around the world, and clients, and all of you who are in the chat room tonight. With humanity's new understanding and acceptance of the quantum world and the role that consciousness plays in shaping both our individual and our collective reality, we have plenty of subject material for this show. I am a full-time practitioner of Dolores' hypnosis method and had the honor and extreme privilege of working with and alongside of her for several years. You can find out more about my practice of quantum healing and my consulting and coaching services at NewEarthJourney.com. And I'd like to mention that I'm offering my very own new quantum healing process that's available remotely. Call or email me about how we can create your very own, unique to you, quantum healing meditation process. And lastly, before we get started tonight, for those of you looking for a practitioner of Dolores' method of quantum healing, or for those of you who've trained with Dolores in the past, you may find these wonderful practitioners and resources and support of all kinds at DoloresCannonQHHT.com. That's DoloresCannonQHHT.com. And if you'd like to participate live on the show tonight, please call us at 646-716-8890. That's 646-716-8890. And when you press 1, it's like holding up your hand and saying you want to ask a question or make a comment. So tonight is February 26, 2016. And I would like to tell you just a little bit about tonight's guest. My friend and colleague, QHHT practitioner, Suzanne Franzen. Suzanne actually trained to be a teacher in junior high school. She taught in Broomfield, Colorado for two years before going into the Peace Corps, and I didn't know that about her at all, so we might have to ask her about that. She spent two years in Malaysia, and it gave her a new perspective of our American experience. Her interest in who we are, where we come from, and what is really going on has led her into TN meditation, NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, the Monroe Institute, the work of Byron Katie, the Avatar Course, Oneness University in India, no less, and now, of course, QHHT. Suzanne trained with Dolores Cannon in Hawaii in 2012, and she lives there now 
and practices QHHT, Dolores' method of quantum healing, exclusively. And what Suzanne says about QHHT is it is the ultimate speedy way to access the super consciousness of all life. Welcome to the show, Suzanne. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is such a wonderful opportunity. I'm just giggling already. <laughs> I have really looked forward to this show. I know that we've been talking about it for quite a while, and one of the main reasons you're here is to to talk about a brand new published book of yours, but we will talk about that a little bit later. But the first thing I'd like to know is, Suzanne, how did you find out about Dolores Cannon, and how did you begin to practice her method? How did that come about for you? Oh, this is such a fun thing to talk about. You know, when you gave me the heads up this morning that I, that was going to be your first question, I sort of went into mystery because I couldn't remember what it was. How did I find her? Uh, you know, some, somebody led me to her somehow. So finally this afternoon I was walking up and down the driveway and I was cogitating about this, and I decided I would ask Dolores, how did I find her? <laughs> And you'll never believe what happened. I saw her face and this big smile, and she just sort of cocked her head, and she says, well, I found you. And that just struck me so perfectly. Of course she found me, and she sent it through the higher self to get me to her course, which was on Kona, in Kona on Hawaii. I had to go to another island, but, you know, she called me in. That's what happened. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. You know, I, I mean, I have goosebumps all over me as you're saying that. And I understand because um, I, I wrote an article myself about how I found Dolores and then later kind of in the way that she's talking with us now, she really laughed at me as if, you know, I was taking <laughs> full credit for it, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we can tell our linear stories from our conscious mind, but way more than that's going on. Right. Oh, I just love that story. So were there a lot of people in your class? What was it like taking um, taking her class then back in 2012? Oh, it was such a good time, and for me, it was absolutely life-changing. The chance to get a uh, session with other uh, students was phenomenal for me, and it changed my life right there. And of course, that made the full commitment to being able to uh, call in students of my own, you know, to to clients, and be able to share this work because it is so amazing what happens when you connect with your own higher self. And I know in my own practice, I have turned it over to my higher self to bring the clients to me who are ready for this. And I know Mm -hmm. I've had phenomenal clients come to me. And I find that there's something really different happening now. It's uh, the past lives isn't the main thing anymore. People are getting stories instead of past lives. They're getting metaphors for, for... the transformation and all the body work that's going on during the session. I mean, there's shaking, there's uh, humming, <laughs> there's all kinds of things going on in their bodies um, that the change work is getting done without having to go to a past life or a future life or a parallel life or anything else. You know, I, I, that's really true. There's a lot of metaphor that's going on. And, you know, Dolores always said you don't have to have a past life, believe in past lives or anything. You just need to be open to the method. And in a way, but I think you're right about the metaphors. There's a lot more metaphor going on because very often the the higher self or the, you know, the higher consciousness is saying the past just isn't that important anymore. I mean, you're supposed to kind of let let that go. <laughs> as much as well, you can, there's, right? some, there's some people that that still helps, and it, it's perfectly fine if that's what happens for them. But uh, what I'm finding is that the main clients that I get are like in the 30s, and they're the new waves. The, the mm-hmm. 
so so they don't necessarily have a past life. They're coming right. in to support the planet without having had uh, many experiences on the earth, and they're just given some stories or metaphors to make them uh, comfortable being in a human body and living on the earth. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. exciting, too, to find that that's happening. And these two young oh, people really are fun. just taking off. Yes, they are, the new children and all of that. I, you know, I'm struck by your sentence, though, that, that you practice QHHT exclusively. There's all these other things that, that you learned. What did you do at the Monroe Institute? Oh, that was phenomenal. The Monroe Institute was... Um, uh, over a week long um, dream um, you know, sleep labs essentially mm-hmm. and they were teaching you to go out of body and uh, be present or go places out of body and the result of that for me what a lot of it was not conscious for me but at the end of the course I became so open to knowing that everyone is me. I am you, you are me. So mm-hmm. when somebody requested something from me, uh, it could be money, it could be clothes, it could be something they liked, a piece of jewelry I was wearing, and I would give it to them just like that. No question. It was just, oh, here, it's for you. And I felt inside myself I was giving it to me. Mm-hmm. I wasn't giving it to them. <laughs> They walked away with it, but I gave it to myself. Another myself. And I, I just love the Monroe. And I will say it uh, often. Uh, Robert Monroe saved my life when I was in my young 20s. I was having spontaneous out-of-body experiences, and I just happened to see his book in, in college university. And he saved my life. He really did. It was like, uh, I'm not going crazy, you know? <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, right. uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. So let me ask you this, too. So you actually went to India to do the Oneness University? Yes, the Oneness University, uh, uh, on the Bhagavan, a couple came in as awakened beings. And mm-hmm. they're young, uh, when they were first married, they started a school for children. And the children started um, having experiences where they, w- they woke up. They, their their higher self or and much more just came into them as a golden ball, and then they they would relate to the whole world totally differently, and beautifully, and some of the parents would come and say, hey, I put my child in your school so they would become a doctor, and look what happened, <laughs> they became an awakened spiritual being, <laughs> wow. and they would take them out of the school, and then other parents came and said, oh my goodness, what's happened to my child here is wonderful. I want it. And so they phased out their school and started the Oneness University so that worldwide people could come and uh, get this transformation experience. And what happens is that there's this blessing. It's the, it's the universal energy. But while you're there, you you find that it's flowing through you. So you can do a hands-on for somebody, and that flow of universal energy just goes in and starts working with them and changing them. So it loosens mm-hmm. up all the tight places. <laughs> and they yeah, call they, it now um, the oneness blessing. There you go. Yeah, I, I, some of our listeners may be familiar with that. And believe it or not, that's that's made it even here to uh, to the Midwest. We have oneness blessings here, and several people who actually went to India as well to, uh, to learn yes, how to yes. give the blessings. So wonderful! Yeah, well, it, it's uh, a, it's a wonderful thing. And okay, I want to go back a little bit because you asked about Dolores Cannon's uh, class that I took way in the beginning of our conversation, and sure. one of the wonderful things that happened there for me was that another uh, woman who lives here on the island with me, who I didn't know, was taking the same class. So Mm -hmm. since the class, we've been able to trade sessions with each other and continue exploring consciousness in that way, and it's just such a blessing. 
Wow. Do you have any stories about that then? I mean, you know, it's, it's always kind of nice to trade sessions with, with somebody else. There's a little bit of the, uh, you know, uh, you both kind of have a, an idea of what might happen and you give each other a little, a little <laughs> flack and it gets exciting. And, you, you know, sometimes clients, of course, come with, come with some quite serious issues. So sometimes doing a swap like that um, uh, can be a lot of fun. Oh, it's just really, really fun. And I think on another uh, call that we had, I, I called in to the show and commented about um, having a lifetime as an elephant. And I remember that. Yeah, how much I love my ears, my flapping ears and stuff. And so that was one that uh, came up in one of the sessions with Diana, my, my co-worker uh, here. Mm-hmm. That I remember that. I remember where I was. I was uh, doing this show in Kansas City, and I remember your voice coming in over over the air <laughs> and telling it, telling us about that. It was it was a really great great show. I bet I bet that changes now for you. Every time you even see an elephant, it must be a different experience. Talk about I am you and you are me. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I do have a big love for them, and I actually did some art pieces that included um, elephants. So that's another side. Of, it's not a career so much as a delight to me to be able to do paintings. And I get lots of um, trance state, I would call them, visions. And so they come, they become stories. And mm-hmm. what I love about the QHHT is that those experiences I had growing up and in my early adulthood um, were just spontaneous things that happened. Now, with QHHT, I've got the direct connect with my higher self and with all everything, and I can call it in any time I want. All I have to do is have Mm -hmm. a question. So Mm -hmm. I'm just thrilled with this, and that's one of the reasons I use it exclusively because it supports the person to know who they are and take off with it. Mm-hmm. And then they don't need continuing therapy, support, come back, talk about it some more, forget all that stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? <laughs> they, they just, they, they're, they're transformed on the spot and amazing, amazing healing sometimes and definitely... Uh, I get feedback of, from the, the minute they walk out the door, something happens. Their phone rings and they're offered a job. You know, it's amazing stuff. So this is so much fun and so effective that I don't want to clog it up with anything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I just keep it here. I don't uh, do any of the other things that I've learned anymore. They're just sort of on, in the back of the closet now. Mhm. Understood. Well, um, you know, we are today going to talk about one of your clients and and a book that you wrote about several sessions that that you had with him. And so, why don't you tell us a little bit about how all of that even started, and then you can tell us how this book. Burning World came to be. And by the way, I've had so much fun carrying it around the last several days and even had somebody <laughs> uh, stop me when I stopped to ha- grab a little bite to eat a day or so ago. And I had this uh, this gal sit down and start asking me all about that. She goes, that looks like the most interesting book. And I looked at her and I thought, is she ready? Is she ready to hear <laughs> about this? And, the, an- and yeah. the answer was yes. She was so uh, that was a lot oh. of fun. So, so tell us a little bit about um, about your book and the client that inspired it and how you got together and just tell us how it all came about, would you? Well, I was going to tell a certain story about that, but it was the linear reality that we live in and what I call the downtown reality. How it came about <laughs> that I met him, but since I had that um, awareness from Dolores today, I think that the the same thing happened with him. The behind the scenes, the higher self, getting this man to me is what really happened. 
But the linear <laughs> one, the linear, linear story in the third dimension reality is there was a, a quantum healing um, tech, uh, practitioner in Colorado who was a friend of this man. And uh, he uh, was, he moved back to Kauai. And so she told him, she looked me up and thanks to you and the forum found me. So it's your fault. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you get yes, credit. it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know what? You, you know, stay tuned for more of that because on our website, uh, which is, again, of course, Dolores Cannon, QHHT.com, we now have a whole new tab just for our published authors. So with uh, the yes, pictures I of the book. I say, yes, isn't, that, <laughs> isn't that wonderful? Um, and it's, 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 it's awesome, yeah. It's astonishing. It's astonishing how many of you have, have books out there, and of course, many of them are about about the sessions and the and the work that we do. But some of, some of them are, you know, how how they woke up stories, or you know, similar similar kinds of subject matter. Um, all of that will be available, and and I've gotten to learn so much more about the the members in our community by asking, you know, who's written the book, and and there's a <laughs> lot of people who are. Who are trying to? I know I'm trying to, but it just uh, it just keeps uh, it keeps getting shoved to the side of my desk <laughs> while I get the other. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we've all got uh, this new channel open. I don't know how much of it is uh, due to uh, anything we're doing, or if it's just because there's a door that's been opened to our higher selves, and that doorway being open is giving us so much inspiration and so much new stuff, new things that haven't been available before, but they're here now. Mm-hmm. So the book, and that's a little bit of, of your book is a little bit of your book's about that, right? Uh, yeah, I would say a little bit. You know, it's interesting <laughs> the responses I'm getting from the book <laughs> because. It's. I think it's going to be like a sleeper in a way. It's going to. It's going to be around, and people are going to pick it up, and they're going to read a little bit, and then they're going to say, "Hmm," and they're going to have to let it integrate because it's going to. Um, uh, what do I want? How do I want to say this? It's. It's like we're so structured and we're so um, scheduled, maybe, and this is going to be the key that starts loosening up the thinking patterns and the awarenesses, and even if somebody hasn't had anything, any training at all or any interest in the metaphysical, the quantum field, they're, they're, it's going to start niggling at them until they go back for more and they go back for more. I know as many times as I've been through this book, every single time I go through it, something else pops up to me. It grabs my attention, and I don't want to go deeper with that particular subject. And it's it's a fascinating journey. So we do want the book to get out there, and the reason it even came about was because Grapo came to me. Uh, he was dying, and he knew it, and he wanted to. He wanted out of here. He said, my life is done. I just, there's no reason for me to stay and his concern, though, wasn't wanting to get healed from the several diseases that he was uh, inhabiting, but he wanted to not suffer, is the way he put it. I don't want to suffer. And in his first session, it was a magical journey because one of his concerns was that he would just make it up. And it wouldn't be really the higher self coming in and talking with him. But the very first thing that happened for him was in a, uh, the beautiful place that he went to was astounding. It had tall gray-green grass and huge trees that were pink trees and magenta sky. And he saw these figures floating up in the sky that looked like balloons character balloons and there were beings there that were making these balloons and he just he cracked up he says I never could have made that up it wouldn't have been anything that I would ever think of 
and from that moment on, he was completely uh, <laughs> into it, you know. Then it was just he let go, everything started to flow. So in that first session, he had many, uh, uh, oh, very exciting, actually, uh, adventures. And we hope that you're going to go to the book and find out about those. <laughs> One of the main conclusions was that we are, disease isn't anything that's a punishment, but disease is a a misalignment of our many bodies. And our many bodies, they told him, was like the Russian dolls, one doll within another doll. And so he went to a place where there it wasn't on this planet at all. It was somewhere totally different. And he was um, shown um, to a room where there was a, a pool, a pool that looked like water, but he said it wasn't really water. And there was a monitor there and a, a person that was turning dials and getting everything set up. And he started asking questions about what's going on here and what should I do? (laughs) And they got it ready and this green light just shot through his head all the way. It just hit him in the forehead and went all the way through. And then he was in in the middle of the pond, but he was not submerged. But this green light was just going around him in waves and waves. And they said that they were aligning all of his bodies that the further information on that was that the beings from all over the universe come to this place to have their bodies aligned. Ooh, hmm. you know, <laughs> like, ah, are we in science fiction now <laughs> or what? Right. But, yeah. But, uh, anyway, they, they, it was a lot of fun just going through that first session. Then at the end of... Um, During the next week, we weren't planning, actually, to go any further. He got what he wanted, and he reported back that he felt completely comfortable and at ease, and there was no fear left and no stress or uh, worry about um, suffering. So it was a complete (laughs) success. But during the week, I had a dream and we know how dreams get to us from the higher dimensions. And in this dream, I was in an auditorium. It wasn't huge, but it was fairly good size. And I was leaning against Grappo, like sitting in his lap, almost leaning back against him, which felt very comfortable. And we were looking up at a stage, and there was a woman all dressed in white robes, and she was giving a lecture, supposedly, but she was showing us a book. And she went through the book and turned pages, and we saw the book, and it was like, oh, what's this about? So when I told him about that, he said, you know, I've been getting the feeling just intuitively that there's much more that they're going to be able to share with us and maybe we we should do more sessions. And then it came about in the second session that they said, we gave you that dream because there's going to be times where it's going to go slowly or there's going to be things that aren't working right and you know, they have to get rearranged. And, and we want you to, to continue being inspired to complete this and get it out to the world. I, Whoa, okay. <laughs> so... We knew that we were being sponsored by something beyond our normal everyday, what I call downtown reality lives. And it's just been an amazing, amazing adventure doing this book. You know, I I really like, Suzanne, what you have written on on the back cover. And may I take a moment and read a a few lines that you have on the back cover of the book? Yeah. So this is yeah. first off, it's such a beautiful book. Um, the photo is beautiful and and it's very um it's very well designed. Um and uh, I don't say that lightly. Uh, my husband's listening, he's probably <laughs> laughing because because of I used to do do this. So um anyway, so on the back cover um are these words. Something is happening. 
our perception of what is real is profoundly changing. We are asking different questions. We are seeking unimpeachable authority. We realize this authority lies within each person. Our authority is the spark of living intelligence within us. In our inward silence, we have heard its voice guiding us to change. We call it guidance, and the voices guide. It's really beautiful words, and there are so many inspiring, inspiring um, revelations, ideas, and sentences. It's, it's not a large book, but it's one of those books that I, I do believe if you read it more, more than once, like you said, <laughs> even you, you're going to get more out of it every time you look at it. Yeah, yeah. So for my uh, sister-in-law, she's somebody that has never delved into any spiritual path or um, been interested at all. But she received a book, and so she says, I can only read a little bit, and then I have to really let it percolate and sink in. (laughs) (laughs) And then I can go back and read a little bit more. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And it reminded me when I first uh, read um, a Seth material way back. That was a long time ago. But that's exactly how I had to do that material because mm-hmm. it was just so different than anything I had ever heard before. It wasn't something we learned in school, in church, or any of our institutions. And this is, again, another level of this. There's information in here that's to tickle you to changing, tickle you <laughs> mm-hmm. in, into loosening up and, and realizing that we are so much more than what we have ever considered that we are. We thought we were these bodies and we're not that even. So mm-hmm. the, the, the bigger picture, the perspective is so important. And there actually is one chapter that is called The Power of Perspective. And it's just so gently stated uh, how important it is to travel, to go places, because you Mm -hmm. change your view of your life. And you go back home and you say, oh, and something has changed because you've gotten another perspective. And I think that's that's a very important thing. There's just a lot of really, really great ideas there. You know, becoming aware of what's possible. And, and, And some of the talking about, you know, magic and some of the things about manifesting, um, you know, some really interesting ideas about how we have to not limit our thinking because when we as a society and as in groups start allowing ourselves to believe the things that are just outside of being possible, then they they can start to become reality because it's all about consciousness, right? It's all about consciousness and I would add in their energy. Everything is energy. So when we start working with any idea or any uh, desire from a viewpoint of its energy, then we, we're going to get different results than trying to work through, oh, I've got to make the money so I could go do this, I have to do this in order to get that, and you know, all that kind of thinking just defeats us. Mm-hmm. And it's very so, common, yeah, I have, I, it, Within the book, there's you know, a wonderful story um, at the end, mainly about what the new burning world is going to be, like and I have my own creation story. Would it be all right if I tell that story? Oh, absolutely. We we're all about stories here, Sabine. <laughs> yeah. So this story is a great one. It's my creation story. It was a trans state um, adventure that I took, and I was out into out in the universe, and I was asking about creation, and I saw a big black hole, a ring. And it frightened me. I was terrified of creation. I was really scared. <laughs> I was shaking. And I, but I knew in myself that the, it, creation had to be a good thing. So I, I did a, um, 
a contract with this ring. And I said, if I come and look in, you won't devour me. And it promised, no, I won't. I wouldn't be devoured. So I went to the the ring and I looked down into creation, and it was beautiful. It was like a meadow with flowers and a stream and trees and just wonderful stuff. And I thought, well, that's got to be okay. And I said, oh, uh, it's a trick. I'm going to go in there and you're going to devour me. <laughs> I <was> so scared. <laughs> so then, second contract um, that I I could come and investigate and I could um, choose to stay or not stay and I wouldn't be devoured. <laughs> that was the word I had. So I float down and I my foot touches down on the ground and spring flowers just pop up all around my foot and that was fun. So I put the other foot down, same thing happened, more flowers popping up. And then uh, I started just sort of tripsing around, you know, and it was, oh, this is really wonderful. And then I heard all these voices at, and I looked up and saw the ring and they were all my friends. And I said, oh, this is wonderful. Come on down and join me. And so they did. And they came down, and then there was a a maple with colored ribbons, and there was music and dancing, and everybody was having a wonderful time. And I thought, well, this is really cool. I I think I do want to stay. So I thought, well, if I want to stay, I I need a house. I, I need a place to stay. And I felt this house behind me. It just appeared instantly. And I turned around and looked at it, and it was absolutely the most perfect, perfect. I couldn't have designed it with an architect and had anything more just to feed my heart and soul. So I go up the steps, and I go in, and I investigate, and it's all wonderful. And then I say, well, this is really good. Now, I wonder, since I'm going to stay, maybe I should go investigate more of the kingdom. And I look out the window, and there is a red Ferrari. <laughs> You're like, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I have never wanted a red Ferrari. I have no interest in, in that kind of car at all. But there it was. So I said, okay. So I go down. I go down. And I get in the car. And I started up. And, of course, that new engine, that power. Oh, it was <laughs> it's glorious. So, okay. I start to take off. And as I take off, put the foot, put foot on the pedal and take off and go down the road, and the house sparkles away. It just turned into pure energy. Uh, and, and what I realized out of this adventure was exactly what the next burning world is going to be. We're going to create instantly with thought and pure energy. And when we no longer need the items or conditions, we will let them go, no attachment to them, and they will just sparkle out of existence into pure energy to be reused. How's that for pure, uh, a pure experience of recycling? <laughs> I love it. I love it. And um, in this in this world, we don't have to consume either, right? We don't have to worry about feeding ourselves, and all of that just goes away, right? Yes. But I have a a clue that we're still going to enjoy creating banquets. Oh, yeah. Not that we need them, but it's an art form. It's an art form. It becomes an art form. And so we can enjoy enjoy anything we think of, anything we want to. But nothing is critical. Like here in the third dimension and in this burning world, which is really described as the burning is the love of our source, the total love being manifest as this world. And that there are many worlds that are coming, that, that this isn't the one at the bottom. It isn't the lowest one. There's more dense, denser ones than this one. But as we rise up in our consciousness and awareness, that we're going to move on to the next burning world where these new conditions are going to be. And that's mainly talked about in the last chapter of the book. And it's, it's just charming. It's charming. You say, oh, yeah, okay, I, I know now that that's where I get to go if I stick around in creation. That, um, fine. So I'm just going to finish up this world totally reveling in what's here and enjoy it and be at ease mm-hmm. with it. 
So that, that's kind of the outcome of all that. Suzanne, when you say um, that there are worlds denser than ours, were those the, the worlds in darkness that was mentioned in the session? The worlds in darkness, well, it's, um, I don't know how to address that part of it, but it's just, I, that's probably fairly accurate. It's just denser, darker, more mm-hmm. um, difficult than here. Which a lot that. of people might, things we... a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people might think that would be tough, but it could be even harder than than what we've got it now on the planet. You know, because some people have some really difficult life situations. But but in the yes, book, there, there are these places that are that are described in the session that are much darker. And and I think it was you asking, or anyway, the question was asked: How do we help? How do we help those people? Yes. Yes. But the answer <laughs> made me sad. Yeah. yeah. Well, they said that we really can't help them, uh, that it's their path, and they will find their way. It's not up to us to help. So it's not our job. Our job is to continue on our path whatever our path is. And each individual has their own path. Is that the way you understood it too? Yes, absolutely. And, and I, I really liked that. Um, there was, it, it, it brought into the awareness, the, the, the phrase, the idea about um, trying to come to a resolution. And it was yeah. pretty, Grappo was uh, um, pretty adamant about saying that resolution wasn't about, like, coming to some sort of agreement. Oh, let's see. I even wrote it down. Resolution is not the answer. Um, it's doing uh, your own path in your own particular way, resolution. And I love that because it's all about authenticity of, you know, your own you know, your own version, your own reality, your own creation. So you retain your individual um, sense of self, yet there's still a, this group consciousness thing going on at the very same time. It would, so that's a lot of fun to read about. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and the group consciousness part of it uh, came up in, uh, oh, what chapter was that? Chapter, uh, hmm. About groups, anyway, is that right? That's what you're thinking of. Well, I, I actually yes, and I have I have page numbers. I don't know what chapter it was, but it was at page 75. Um, there was uh, some beginning, some talk about how the idea of you know if you hang out in a cave or in your own house and you really really separate yourself, um, you're not doing yourself or humanity a lot of favors that it's actually um, a very good thing to go have your coffee in a coffee shop that simply simply doing that <laughs> changes the dynamics of the whole and and there was a lot more talk about that about you know how to do that you don't have to teach a class you don't have to give a lecture you don't have to whatever but but simply um, proximity to other humans is a great part of why we're here and what we're doing Right, and this is kind of another aspect of the behind the scenes where our higher self uh, is out in public then and connecting with the higher self of all the others in whatever group you're in, if it's a restaurant, a movie, in the mall, um, a coffee shop, whatever it is, and you don't even have to be paying attention to it because they're handling it, your own higher self and the higher self of the others, and they're raising the vibration of everyone in in that area. So it puts a whole different spin on if you're going to go to a movie, you're not just going Mm -hmm. to a movie. You're participating Mm -hmm. in a grand adventure of the higher self connecting with everybody in that theater. So even if you don't know people and don't don't know their names or anything and Oh, no. there's still this exchange and all of that. So how does that, Suzanne, how do you think that plays out? It got me thinking about things like um, our original support forum community, you know, that that we've kept it together and, and there's 
uh, individuals and members around the entire planet. Of course, we get together when we can, but but we're an online community. How do you think? How do you think that works, or does it work? Yeah, I mean, it seems it's like exactly. Of course, it's the same thing. We're connecting mm-hmm. with each other. We're sharing stories, and any time we're we're connecting in any way, there's a greater connection going on. Mm-hmm. It makes it so much more fun to go out in the public <laughs> and know that, that it's it's not just your little self going out and, you know, wanting to satisfy yourself with a, a latte, you know, that you're actually doing something that you don't even realize you're doing. So just enjoy it. Be there and, and relax and let it happen. Mm-hmm. And you don't need content. You don't really need content. But... This whole idea of hugging is wonderful, and then just smiling at somebody, saying hello to somebody that's there in the shop. Uh, it's it's a it's a new way of thinking about magic. Mhm, mhm. It really it really is. It makes me. Um, it, it, let's see. I wrote something down about batteries. Sort of. Oh, something you. What did you say about, oh, I can't even read my own handwriting, but something about that charges up your batteries going out like that. Yes, yes. Uh, If you go with the right perspective, a perspective of enjoyment and loving and laughter and joy and play, and you're you're going out to experience the creation, Mm-hmm. And you're going to get the very most juice out of it you can, you know. And <laughs> you have to relax into that and instead of trying to fix things and finding fault right. with Those take mm-hmm. you down into the depths of the ugh, dark. So, and, 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 and we have a habit of trying to do that. We're always in judging every, everything. I mean, look at the politics right now. <laughs> or, uh, or the money situations, or you know, people's relationships, and everybody's saying, "Oh, it's your fault, your fault, your fault." Well, there is no fault. That's an yeah. illusion, and it's a perspective. And where does it get you in the dumps? Right. So it reminds me of the perspective. Reminds me of the phrase that you used throughout the book about putting on the brakes. Oh yes, yes. And that's a whole other adventure that's uh, a, a very important part of this book, putting on the brakes. Uh, the title of the book, Burning Worlds, and then it says the first principle of creation, and it, it implies that those are connected, that the first principle would be the burning worlds, but it's not. But we tricked you. <laughs> I tricked me. <laughs> well, why don't you explain that then? There, There are two separate things. We've talked a little bit uh, about the burning world and that there are many different ones and we get to go to in the next more advanced and more advanced and more advanced. It's just like going through school. You go through kindergarten and then, you know, pretty soon you're in junior high and then high school and then you make some choices and whatever. So we, we do, we actually in consciousness go to the next burning world. But the first principle of creation is actually the souls that are at home with source and they are traveling a train, say they're in a train and they look out at the view of all of everything and they see a small dot and they say, well, what is that dot? What's that dot? And they want to investigate. They get curious. So, so they go, they get closer to it and they see, it's called creation. That dot, <laughs> that tiny dot, mm-hmm. and it, that dot is expanding as more uh, souls come into it and have experiences. They, the whole thing is exponentially growing, but it's still a small dot in the whole perspective of cre- all that is. And I love in the that dot, idea. I love that idea. Yeah. You know, who I've heard that before is, um, are you familiar with um, uh, Mr. Uh, Jim Self? He talks a little bit about that. He He's the one who, um, he has some great uh, 
relationships with Metatron and some of the archangels. He he was one of the uh-huh. people who's come to the planet this time around who has no forgetfulness. He he absolutely remembers. And, oh, yes. and when he yes. every time he sleeps at night he just goes he goes back back home and he talks about all of this. So he has a very you know, he doesn't get very flustered or anything. He's got some great um some great classes and information out there. But one of the things that he said that I heard him say well multiple times but but I love this because I got to read it in your book too is about that dot and he said, you know, there are massive amount of of realities out there that don't even know about this thing called physical reality because it's that dot. <laughs> they they don't yes. even know that it exists. But the majority, uh-huh. majority, majority of what actual creation is doesn't. Uh-huh. We aren't hardly a blip on the radar of what creation is. Yeah. So, so, so people, humans can think, oh, you know, all of creation, and then they might think of planets or galaxies or whatever. And, <laughs> and the thing is, is that's what you're saying. All the planets, all the galaxies, all those physical dimensions are that dot. <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> but, but even beyond that, all of our supposed gods, dimensions, parallel lives, galaxies, universes, the metaverse, yeah. they're all in form or in the dot, so we yep. may not be able to see them because they're in a different frequency than we're in, but they're still part of creation, Mm-hmm. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. And then when you get out of creation, you're essentially home. You're back at source. Mm-hmm. It's so very, very interesting. Cre- the creation, though, is so fascinating, and we love it. We are so greedy to experience everything. So most likely, we're going to stick around going further in creation to the next burning world and then the next one and the next one. They said it's infinite. (laughs) But if you want to step out of creation, there are clues in this book about how to do that. If you're really at the place where you're ready to step out of creation, there's no point in being in any of it anymore and you want to go back home to source well, read the book. <laughs> it's there. It's there. The hints are there. So, do you do you see your friend anymore? Um, how, oh, how, yeah. I talked with him this that? morning. Oh, I uh-huh. talked with him this morning. He's so excited about this show. He's gonna. He's listening in. I'm sure. And uh, I asked him. You know, one of his guides that he he was uh, shown and worked with. In, in the story that we tell in the book called Sister. And they said they had many, many lives together. And they are explaining uh, some of the things that are going on in creation and how we can do be with the, um, the physics and the uh, chemistry and, and everything else that's in creation so that we can be at ease instead of trying to fight it all the time. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's an important... And, and some of what you were saying about the physics, that's pretty interesting, too, that, that some of that, uh, they're, the, they're not as... There aren't as many hard edges and boundaries around physics that, you know, that what we think there is. Right. Yeah, and, and as we go to the next burning world, there are going to be even new, c- completely different physics that we'll be working with. And it's like the story of creation that I, I, I told before, that we're going to create directly with our thoughts, but we're been, going to be so connected with each other that there's no clash in creating. And it, we're just going to do incredible, magnificent, fun you know, satisfying, fulfilling thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lovely. Mm-hmm. Well, um, you know, speaking of um, creation in the burning world, so 
so there's this concept I liked in there too in the book about how there's like a network. You you made uh, quite a point. It's not really linear, but there's a network of these worlds that are that at, that at their base are you know come from the element of fire, which is where the you know the whole idea of burning worlds is, and then the next world and the next world, and then. You know, just as I'm thinking, gosh, could this possibly have anything to do with global warming? Because I've always thought that it has. And, and in my own quantum healing sessions, I've, uh, you know, I've asked some of these questions or some of this information has come forth. And then <clears throat> then I turn the page, and you asked the exact same question. I just loved it. I mean, I'd like, I burst out laughing because I'm like, yes, uh, if I'd have been there, I would have said the same thing. I felt like I was sitting in the session with you. Oh, great, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So, the idea, so the idea is, yes, it really does have something to do with some of the global warming ideas, you know? Yes, that the earth itself is evolving and changing, and it's not our fault. That That's such a, a relief. I mean, we're all into the blame game. And right. so it's your fault for doing this, and it's their fault for doing that, and you shouldn't do this, and you should be, you know, ugh, the rules that we impose upon each other that confine us and make us miserable are just rampant. So to me, this book got me off the hook. It said, you know, mm-hmm. it's not your fault. And the, the earth is doing its own ascension plan, and it's on its path. It's doing it perfectly. And, yes, warming up is part of it. Right. And, yeah, I've always I've always thought that it was kind of silly to think that, that we could really, I mean, we, we have taken advantage of our planet. That is for sure. And we've polluted it and we've dirtied it. Because um, I've never believed that what we were doing um, as a society, you know, humanity, could could really change the temperature you know, like it is on, on the planet. And, you know, <laughs> I've heard even, um, you know, mainstream science talk about the increase in planetary temperatures of, you know, some of the other planets in our system. Well, you know... <laughs> I don't think our <laughs> greenhouse gases are going through, you know, <laughs> through space and going uh, and gathering around Mars or whatever. I mean, it just seems it's like, you know, the the whole solar system is getting warmer. And um, so some of that made some nice sense for me, too, reading that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Good. Good. Well, do you <laughs> feel that same sense of, you know, after reading this book, or has that not settled in yet since you just finished it this morning? <laughs> Um, no, I, you know, I knew that already. For for me, your book was um, was great confirmation for things that I already, you know, many things that I, I personally already felt or, or discovered. Um, and I love this. I I love the idea about um, you know the authenticity within the perspective and the individual and in the self. Um, you know, just. Uh, just leaving the N5D um, Super Tower Conference, uh, you know, yes. last weekend, I got I got into a uh, a little Honda Uber Uber car. I got Ubered to the uh, to the <laughs> airport, and uh, <laughs> and and the fella, he was pretty interesting. And he looked over at me. Oh, you know what you're doing in town? Oh, you know, it's here for a conference. Oh, did you know? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, you know. Well, what was it about? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm uh, looking at him, you know, you have that moment of, well, am I going to tell him what this is about or not? So, well, you know, so I, you know, I see if he's interested. And, boy, he asks a lot of questions. But um, here's what the entire gist of our um, of our drive was, and I think it, it your, your book uh, satisfies and uh, agrees with the, with the entire – point of my conversation was is he kept trying to ask me questions that would make one concept correct and another one incorrect. Uh, and he kept, yeah. You know, usually kind of, and some some in belief or theory or maybe religious or or um you know like that. But but you know I kept looking at him and I, I, I said it very 
very nicely, um, you know, with a smile on my face, and I said, well, from, from this perspective, it's not that one thing is, is right and another thing is wrong. So what you're sort of saying is it has to be this or that. And, and I said, but this way of thinking is it's far more that it, is, it can be this and that, but it doesn't negate each other, you know. It exactly, you don't have yes. To, you, <laughs> you don't have to be fighting. You don't have to be right. You don't have to get all upset about anything. It's just like, you know, it's, it's this and that. And it's, it's in the tiniest of words, it just brings great relief, at least it does to me. Oh, yes. Either or <laughs> realities are very difficult. <laughs> and how do you ever right. choose, anyway? Is it just that? Uh, no. Anything is possible. I love it. You know, I dedicated <laughs> this book to my mother because she taught me so clearly that, well, she says this, at 80 years old, she says, well, what I've learned is that life is short and I really don't know anything, but anything is possible. And at 90 years old, she says, you know, my theory is that everything that ever was or ever will be is happening right now. So she knew about simultaneous time. And yeah. that means we can go back in history and find out what really happened. Well, guess what? We can also go into the future and find out what are some of the possibilities that we get to choose. Mm-hmm. Hey, you mentioned us. something. You mentioned something about how you talk to your uh your mom in the book would would you talk about that because that was another time that I was jumping up and down because that's uh that's one way Dolores Cannon um you know pops in her head in in my world and talks to me tell me what that is yes I uh I if I have a question I mean I talk with my mom all the time just you know I share stories with her and stuff and I don't hear back so much but I feel the presence I just feel like, yeah, it's it's comforting, you know. And if I really want to get some answers about something from where her perspective and where she is now, I get on the computer because it's easy to just let my fingers fly. And, you know, I just don't monitor it. I just let it it come through. Of course, I'm recognizing what's being said as she says it. But it just is, I get astounding material out of that things that I wouldn't have guessed that she would have said <laughs> or have a perspective right. on. Yeah. Uh, it's a very interesting thing to start this. I know when I first started it, there's all kinds of doubts and um, poo-pooing going on in your own mind, but I just went ahead and went for it. And the way that I just know that it's valid and authentic is I completely forget everything that was said. I mean, I literally... You know, sometimes Uh I go back to some of this writing and I look at it and it's as if I'm reading it for the very first time because it is so separate from my own internal conscious thoughts. So that's when I know Uh it's authentic. Yes, (laughs) yes, yes. And and isn't it fun? I mean, we are just having a blast with this new reality that's showing up for us through this QHHT. At least that's the best I've gotten. Yeah, it is. Yeah. A, it is a lot of fun. And the the part though that makes me laugh over and I know some of my listeners have heard me say it before, but I I have to laugh. <laughs> Del- Dolores would say, "Is she kind of? She would wrinkle her nose sometimes at the idea of channeling, which you know is just really pretty funny uh, considering what what she does and the fact that you know she t- talked to Nostradamus through a you know through multiple uh, people yeah. in trance." But, but she she would kind of make that nose about channeling, and I heard her say more than once, "When I'm dead, I'm not letting anyone channel me." And <laughs> she would just laugh and laugh, you know, because that's who she was. And so, you know, here I am, kind of doing some of this communicating with her, and I've more than once I've asked, "I'm like, Dolores, I said, you, you always said you wouldn't let anyone channel you," and she she scoffed. She just scoffed and said. You're not channeling me. You're just listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. Sure. And doesn't that sound like Dolores? You know, even when oh, she's yeah. so yeah. blunt and, and 
uh, but very much, uh, very much her own person. So she's made quite a difference in this world, hasn't she? She has, and thank, thank the blessing, whatever it is, you know, that <laughs> brought us into this life with her because it's been an amazing adventure for her, for her and for us, and uh, it's just it's mind boggling actually. <laughs> So, yeah, the reach you know, that she's, she's had. Coming, she's coming. She's coming into the sessions. Uh, interestingly, too, I had one client recently that I, I asked because I felt like I and uh, the client's uh, higher self said, "No, she's not here right now." <laughs> and then two days later, another client I didn't even ask, and she volunteered. She says, "Oh, Dolores is here now." <laughs> While she was in the session. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's really fun. It, it's really fun. It is fun. It is fun. <clears throat> well, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about about your book? Um, is there any other concepts or any other thing that you think is important to tell the listeners uh, to have them, um, you know? Well, I would say, are we kind of finishing up here? Because it is time, I think. Yeah, we're pa- we're past an hour, so whenever you're ready. Um, well, the best way to, to or the easy, an, an easy way to, to find the book is to go to my website, and there is a link there for the book, and then it'll take you to Amazon.com, and that's the place that you can purchase the book. And besides that, uh, you can just go to Amazon.com and type in my name, Suzanne Drexel Branson, and that will directly, or you could put in Burning Worlds, The First Principle of Creation, and, and it's a little more, you have to go to this and that before it, you actually find it, but it works. But my <laughs> website that you want to go to <laughs> is qhht dash kawaii dot com and kawaii is k a u a i kawaii I was losing my mind there I couldn't spell my own text <laughs> <laughs> that's right. uh, where my my uh coworker on this is yeah, my co-worker on this book is also uh, now designing a Burning Worlds website. And it's already up, but it's not fully, um, uh, what, it doesn't have all the information that we're going to be having on it. But we feel that there's a place where it could turn into a um, a conversation as people read things and then they they begin to understand it and then they have a little further exploration of it, there could even be study groups that um, get mm-hmm. together and discuss some of these points and and try and find out by letting it all in and flow through them and share with each other. So there's another possibility of a group enhancement. Mm-hmm. So that website, that website is burning dash worlds.com the dash is important hmm. because if you leave it out you're going to get a, 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 a I think it's a German uh, technic company or something <laughs> <laughs> and you won't get <laughs> yeah it's a different thing but we're, we're living uh, Star Trek don't you think oh gosh we really really are you know I used to think um, when I was in my 20s or such I I mean, I liked Star Trek myself, but, like, the people who dressed up and were Trekkies, I, I really didn't understand them at all. And, of course, now I completely understand them. I mean, <laughs> I completely, yeah. completely understand them. And, you know, that, it, you know, if I had a nickel for every time I said holodeck or, or some of the other, you know, ways <laughs> that were always re, refer, <laughs> referring to yeah. Star Trek. Um, you know, Gene Roddenberry and all of those folks, yes. I mean, there's a reason that so many of, of the things that we are opening our real world up to uh, reminds us of Star Trek, transporting, holodecks, manifesting, you know, traveling. And the Absolutely. Prime 
the prime yep. directive, All which you talk about too in Burning World, don't you? The prime directive. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. Uh, non-interference, <laughs> non-interference. But when asked, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's right. more and more available have, that we can still have help. Well, listen, this has yeah. been so much fun. You know, I've I've enjoyed you, um, your friendship and um, your participation and membership in in our original support forum community for a very long time. You're a very important member um, of our forum family and um, and a good friend. And I'm just tickled pink to have gotten <laughs> the uh, the book and signed and everything. And I, I just carried it around um, for, for a while. And, I, yes, I just finished it this morning. But um, uh, <laughs> it was good. It was really good that I finished it today because, you know, it was all in my head. And then uh, it was, was able uh-huh. to talk about it. And and also, um, you can also find the book uh, at the Dolores Cannon website because we have, now have the author's page. So um, so thank you, Suzanne, and, and thank Grappo for me. Grappo, I'm going to send you a big old hug. I hope you are listening live. Uh, thank you so much for allowing Suzanne to take the sessions and turning them into a book and um, and sharing it with the world. Dolores is pleased. I see her grinning from, from ear to ear. So, um, oh, so thank yes. you both. When I, when I first uh, contacted her, she was still living, of course, and I, I, she told me that she was going to be publishing this book. And an email, a real live email. <laughs> wow. And and then she passed, and there was such a, a turnover, and it was taking such a long time. So I went ahead and self-published so that I could get it out there quicker, and I'm really Thank glad goodness. that I did. Oh, so, yeah, it's I, been a, I, quite an adventure. I am so glad that you did too. And we're going to add more and more books to our our site and get more and more people interested and hopefully we can get spread the word about your work and others. So is there a link to that for the public? Oh, absolutely. It's uh, Dolores. Yeah, that's in the Dolores Cannon QHHT.com website. It's it's where the listings of the practitioners is and all the information. We also have a, a, a blog by other practitioners that, um, that is there that we we take stories from from people who have amazing sessions all around the world and different things that happen in them. So um, yeah, it's, it's quite the little portal, and and we're redesigning it behind the scenes too. And hopefully, um, <laughs> okay. Hopefully well, not I want to yeah existed. on my burning world on my burning world website. I want to put that in the in sidebar that oh, so sure. that people can get to that. Absolutely. Well, yeah. well, I'll make I'll make sure that that uh, that you get that information. So, <laughs> well, thanks again for for spending the evening with me, Suzanne, and and our listeners. Um, and we will. Well, this is this is see been you on the forum. Enhanced <laughs> adventure. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, it's really been great. Well, thanks again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks, we'll talk Sandra. to you later then. <laughs> well, we're about out of time for the show this evening, and I want to thank all of you out there too who tuned in to listen, and all of you out there who are listening to an archived version of this show in the future, either on the Blog Talk link or or the YouTube channel. And thanks again to Suzanne. And I'd like to remind those of you interested in quantum healing or looking for a practitioner of Dolores's method, you can find. All of that information at DoloresCannonQHHT.com. And you can find out more about me and my practice at NewEarthJourney.com. So until next time, sleep well, and many blessings to you all. Thank you so much.